Hey guys, Chris from Average Escape Reviews here, and today we're going to be taking a look at a comparison between the Hadian boards. I've got the bamboo on my left and the carbon on my right, and this video is going to be about explaining the real world differences between these two boards, what they feel like when you get them out onto the real world, onto the streets, off-roading, in parks, what you experience to hopefully clear up and help answer the question if you're deciding between one of these two boards, which one you should hopefully pick up. Let's jump into it. Before we jump into the video, make sure that you thumbs up and also subscribe and have notification bells turned on so you can keep up to date with all of the videos that we post. And most importantly, after we finish this comparison, comment down below and let me know what video you want to see next. Now, when we take a look at both of these boards, of course, like all of the other videos that I filmed, I'm gonna be splitting it down into categories. The first thing we're gonna be touching on is gonna be the ride of what these two boards are like. I think that's gonna be probably the most obvious difference between both boards, both setups. One is clearly very made from carbon fiber and the other one is made from bamboo. That has a massive impact on the experience that you have when you're riding off-road, when you're riding on the streets, the way it responds to different things that you ride over. All of this is massively impacted based on the material that the board is made from. Now, the first thing you're gonna pick up on is gonna be the stiffness of both of the... That's all right, mate. <laughs> Do you wanna be on YouTube? Yeah? Now, the main difference is gonna be the stiffness of these two boards. The bamboo being made from bamboo is incredibly flexible. The battery enclosure and battery design itself is segmented and has gaps or ridges to allow the deck and the battery enclosure to flex while the rider's riding on it. That has a massive difference on how the board feels. When you ride on very, very rough terrain, when you ride over bumps, when you drop down off of curves, or curves rather, when you're carving, when you're sliding the board out, having that spongy-like feeling makes a very, very big difference on the board's performance versus it being constructed from a carbon composite or a carbon fiber deck. This board, in comparison, is incredibly stiff. So when you ride over like the grass that we're on right now, when you drop down off of curbs, or you're just generally carving, going at top speed, riding over bumps, this deck is incredibly stiff. It has no play, no flexibility whatsoever. The only flexibility that you experience is in the tires being mushed as you bounce up and down, or maybe the bushings being compressed as you're jumping up and down on the board. But the deck, no movement at all. What that means is you're gonna feel a much, much more substantial um, vibration or impact as you go over various things. Now, while that is incredibly predictable and some riders really like that, versus the kind of delayed flexing and unflexing reaction you get from the bamboo, this is where the personal preference and personal choice really kicks in. This is very predictable, it's very stable at top speed, and because it's stiff, when you ride over things and you get that thud and that bump, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's something that some riders really like because it's predictable, it's stiff, it's rigid. But for me, I've always preferred a deck that flexes. When you ride over stiff things or drop down off of curbs with this, the board flex, twists, and then kind of snaps back into position, which is a sensation that you kind of have to get used to and adapt to. But if I have the choice between these two, that's gonna be the biggest thing that you notice. And that is why I gravitate towards the bamboo over the carbon. I like that feeling, I like that reaction, that kind of whippiness that the board has. The best way that I could explain it is imagine jumping on a trampoline repeatedly and then getting straight off of the trampoline and doing the exact same thing on the ground it feels much more unnatural when you've gone from kind of bouncing and and, and like jumping up high and feeling that flex that the trampoline provides then when you do the exact same thing on a solid floor it feels much more dramatic that's the difference that you feel between these two boards that's the best way that i could explain it now from there it's going to be the deck shape and size both of these decks have a very similar shape in terms of the fact that the sides kind of punch out the middle of the deck where your feet don't traditionally stand kind of punches in a little bit and then as you get to the back where your other foot is it punches out a bit the carbon deck does the exact same thing in terms of the length of these decks and the width the length is supposedly the carbon is a little bit shorter than the bamboo but when measuring and looking at the, the length myself i can't really see that i believe the the carbon is about 39.3 inches long and the bamboo comes in at 39.7 inches long but this isn't a difference I've really been able to see when I look at the boards. Foot placement pretty much looks the same to me and the deck, the deck width is roughly about 10 inches which is basically the same on both of these boards. Now when we look at the concave of both of these boards that's going to be another place that there's a massive massive difference and hopefully with the clips that I'm overlaying you'll be able to see that. With the carbon uh, Hadian board over here the concave of this board is more of a, a W shape but it's a very 
relaxed concave. It's not very aggressive. It has a W concave with a drop down on the front of the board and also on the bottom. And if you don't know what a drop down is, it's essentially where the deck goes down and then across. So you've kind of got like a step on either side. The drop down on the carbon is very relaxed. It's not very exaggerated or dramatic. When we look at the concave featured on the bamboo over here, it has the W concave as well, but it's much deeper, much more exaggerated with the bamboo board. I feel like this being the kind of cruiser carver kind of board, that might be why they did that. But again, it's something that you definitely notice. This deck also does feature a drop down, but again, the drop down on the bamboo versus the carbon is much deeper, much more exaggerated. And it is something that you can definitely, definitely feel. When I had the original uh, bamboo GTR that had no uh, drop down whatsoever, it was just a U concave, but the carbon GTR did have a drop down as well as the concave, but you could feel the drop down very aggressively on that board versus the bamboo GTR. And now when we look at the Hadian series of boards, they've essentially swapped the way that the concaves and the drop downs, you'd expect them to see them on the boards. The carbon version now has a much more relaxed W concave and a much more relaxed drop down. Whereas the bamboo version of the board has a very, very deep concave, same W concave, um, but it's much more exaggerated on the bamboo and the drop down is also deeper. Now, the way that affects your ride when you're riding both of these two boards is I find that with a deeper concave and a deeper drop down, you essentially have more contact with the board, which results in better control over the deck. Now, I'm not saying that with the carbon, you don't have as much control. I just find that with the bamboo, with the particular shape of deck that this board has, it allows for better contact with the foot on the deck allowing for better control, deeper calves, tighter turns. That is, of course, in my opinion. That's not saying that this one's bad at doing that. I just find that if you're really, really pushing for something that can carve very aggressively and you can really like sink your feet into with that, especially with that flex, the way the board kind of flexes and then snaps back into place, you just have much more control and you can be a lot more aggressive with your movements and your maneuvers with the bamboo board over the carbon. Now, something I did notice, this isn't something that you're gonna pick up on if you go for like an experience day and you try this board, and then maybe a couple days later you try this board, or you can only try one or the other. I found because of the deeper drop down on the bamboo board and the shape of the deck versus the carbon, when I'm on the bamboo, I know exactly where the edge of the board is without having to look down. So if I'm getting ready to like adjust my feet, cause I'm gonna do a slide or a, three, a 180 or a 360, with the bamboo, I knew exactly where the edge of the board was, so I could kind of like move my foot into position, lock it round the edge of the deck so I could help to give myself more leverage to be able to swing the deck round. Whereas with the carbon, because it's a much more softer drop down and nowhere near as aggressive, I found it much harder to find where that placement was without looking at the deck. What that meant is if I tried to do the same thing, I might catch the wheel with my back leg while I was trying to do slides or anything like that on the grass but with the bamboo board it was just a lot more obvious where the edge of the board was without having to look back it sounds like something that's nitpicky but it's something that i noticed switching between these two boards on the same day now from there i think it leads nicely onto the clearance that both of these two boards have because this is a carbon fiber board and a lot of the components are kind of very very slim line and kind of built into the body of the board or tucked into the chassis of the board should i say now and the bamboo board is much more of a traditional electric skateboard design where the electronics in the enclosure are all in one kind of body which is the enclosure and that's then bolted to the bottom of the board that essentially means that the carbon board has much more clearance ground clearance in terms of when you're riding the board the belly of the board has a much bigger body of space between the bottom of the board and the ground that you're riding on than the bamboo so essentially if you're riding on um, um, pump tracks and these like very very steep sharp hills the carbon is going to be the best choice because of how much ground clearance it has versus the bamboo because you're going to find that if you do go over very sharp hills or curb or, or like um, pump tracks the belly of the board or the enclosure at the bottom of the board could scratch or scrape as you go over certain bumps or certain hills or even dropping off of quite high curbs so if that's something for concern then it kind of makes it very easy which one you should go for clearance is much better on this board than it is on this one that might not sound like it's something that's very important but especially if you're a bigger heavier rider you're going to probably want to go for the carbon board over the uh, bamboo board if you're kind of like 90 kg 95 kg and above i would automatically recommend going for the carbon versus the bamboo because of the clearance and because of the flex even if you have enough clearance in the neutral position when you're riding carving and the deck is flexing that body of the board could come into contact with the ground so that's definitely something to mention now of course we're not going to go any further without looking at the design of both of these boards whereas i'm a big fan of the traditional skateboard look and feel which is why i like a bamboo over a carbon i really do appreciate the way the carbon board does look this is very different from what we saw previously the original gtr carbon was a i'd like to refer to it as like a unibody design where the the carbon fiber deck 
had a cutout in the middle or rather not a cutout but like a, a pocket in the middle right at the top of the board where all of the battery and all of the electronic components of the board slotted into. This is very different now because the new Hadian board with the carbon series has an actual cutout so it's not like a unibody construction now it's more of a chassis design and I feel like the reason Evolve did that is not so much to save weight because I don't really think it's going to save a lot of weight with this particular design maybe like a couple of grams but nothing significant I think it's to reduce the thickness of the body of the board because of that cutout the enclosure that holds the components and the battery now sits in the center of the board and like kind of like locks and bolts into the center of the board and it's actually kind of exposed at the base of the board without a extra layer of carbon fiber covering that which I feel would have increased the thickness of the board it's incredibly thin considering how much more battery power this board has from the previous generation of boards they've done a very good job of keeping it extremely thin so this new chassis design where essentially the battery if you remove the battery in this top case there's just a hole in the body of the board and all of that bolts in together once it's assembled or once you've got the battery connected in the top case on i think it's a pretty effective way of being able to reduce the thickness of the board maybe a little bit so on the weight and it's also interesting that the actual um, logo in the center of the deck where you can see the evolve uh, logo that lights up when you're riding the board if you have the lights turned on that is actually attached to the battery enclosure it's part of the enclosure and battery itself which i thought was pretty interesting when you kind of dismantle the board and take a look at it and when we look at the design of the bamboo board of course like i said standard skateboard electric skateboard design where it's a battery all of the electronics inside an enclosure bolted to the bottom of the board that does mean that this is pretty thick it's considerably thicker than the the carbon board and if that's something that you're concerned with or something that you like to think about you want something very low profile very thin again you know which one that you need to be going for in this instance and of course remember the points that we mentioned about the clearance the thickness has a massive impact on how much clearance you have on the ground when you're riding around with the belly of the board being close to the surface that you're riding on it's also fair to say when you flip over the it's also fair to say when you flip these boards over and you look on the base of them, there is a big difference in the design of these boards. The bottom of the carbon board does look incredibly sleek. It looks like a board that's been created in this year rather than, I'm not saying the bamboo looks old and dated, but there's not a lot of visual differences between this board and the previous one. Whereas if you stuck the carbon Hadian next to the carbon GTR, this board now makes the GTR look dated and old. It looks incredibly futuristic. It's got nice little vents to allow airflow to go into the board and cool the components down while you're riding around. This board looks like an absolute machine, whereas this one looks a lot more traditional. I'm not saying that it's bad because this is the one I prefer, but credit where credit is due. The, even the design of the new carbon fiber layering, it's not like the, the crossover weave that we're used to seeing. It's more of like a, a random weave, which apparently will add a lot more strength to this board in pretty much any direction as opposed to the traditional weaving carbon fiber patterns that we see which is more like this which adds strength in the direction of the weave that it's going in because this is a chassis design and it's not a unibody design Evolve essentially had to come up with a better carbon layering patterning or construction method to ensure that the body of the board would be stronger because they've essentially cut out the entire middle section of the board so the random carbon weaving layering isn't actually for design purposes it's not aesthetic it actually has uh, performance benefits or durability benefits which is pretty interesting to know so there's a lot of tech and design that's gone into this board it looks like again a board that's been designed in the future versus what we're used to seeing with electric skateboards look like so big props on the design now some other elements that have changed is also the fact that these boards now have lights built in the bamboo hadian has a light strip on the enclosure on the front and also on the back that essentially is there to glow up if you're braking it'll flash red which is quite useful if you're riding around in the nighttime. but you can of course add uh, additional lights to this board if that's something that you want to do it features ports on the bottom of the board to be able to do that whereas the carbon hadian board has all of these lights built in the logo lights up in the middle and you've got two light strips down the sides of the board that you can create numerous combinations of lighting patterns with you can have a solid light a pulsing light a flickering light and it also of course does light up red automatically when you brake but you do have the option to turn these off so it's nice to see that those have been implemented into the boards from the get-go but the carbon does have much more substantial lighting than what you would see straight out of the box from the bamboo Another point to notice uh, that's different with these two boards is the port positioning. The charger port is on the side of the bamboo board, the power port is on the other side, whereas on the carbon board it's on the rear of the bo body of the board, just next to the trucks, right in the center of the body's, um, the skateboard's body. Now, it's a lot sleeker to have it there, the power button I definitely prefer it there but one thing I absolutely hate is plugging in the charger on the carbon board versus the bamboo because of its placement the actual port after you remove the um, weather sealant cover 
the actual port is pushed quite deep into the board, so it's quite finicky trying to plug in the charger. Whereas on the uh, Hadian Bamboo, it's on the side and you can kind of just slot it in in a matter of seconds. It sounds like a real nitpicky thing to kind of critique, but it really annoyed me trying to plug it in. I couldn't do it in the dark. I had to shine a light on it. Whereas with the Bamboo, I can plug it in without even looking at it. It's nice and easy. And another point to notice, the two ports on the rear of the body's enclosure on the uh, Bamboo board are for, it's like a modular kind of system that Evolve's created. This was traditionally USB ports, but now it's some modular plug that they've made that goes with their accessories that they're creating. And the carbon board doesn't have that. So neither of these boards actually have USB ports anymore. So if that's something that you needed, I'd probably reference the GTR boards because these ones, that's now gone, they don't have it. Now, in terms of the shape of the decks um, and also the weight of these boards, this particular board over here, the carbon, is about 13.3, 13.5 kilos. I'll put the exact number on the screen in case I'm off. And this board is pretty much the same weight. The bamboo and the carbon don't have a lot of difference in them. Not something you're going to notice when you're holding them. But because of this deck shape being quite sharp, and at a kind of like a, a strange angle because the concave is much deeper so the edges kind of flare upwards and outwards it means carrying it in your hands is really uncomfortable i've said this in the other video that i filmed seems really nitpicky but it's a fact and it also feels heavier than the carbon board although they're basically the same weight because this is much more rounded on the edges it's carbon fiber it's polished it's smooth and the chassis design means that the center of gravity or the rather the, the weight of the board is much more centralized so when you flip it over it's on its side and you're holding it flying up steps or whatever way easier to carry this board than that one it's, it sounds mad, but this just feels more balanced and lighter in your hands than this one over here. So again, if that's an issue, if you're commuting, flying up multiple flights of stairs, maybe that's something to consider. And now the last point that we're going to be looking at is going to be the weather sealing of both of these boards and also general maintenance and cleaning. Now, I've mentioned this in previous videos when we've looked at the previous generation of boards, the GTR. The Bamboo, although it's my favorite because of that flexible battery enclosure and those grooves in it and all of the different parts of this board has had bolted to it, it means that this is a bit of a pain to clean and maintain, as well as the fact that when you're dropping off of curbs, you might scratch the body of the enclosure, which is something else you have to worry about. This is still my favorite, don't get me wrong, but you have to bear that in mind. Whereas the carbon, although it's not the same unibody design and it's a chassis design with everything kind of bolted in the middle of it, it's still so much easier to maintain and clean, better ground clearance. You don't really ever scratch the bottom of this, uh, the body of the, the board or the belly of the board while you're riding around. It's a much easier board to maintain. And I personally feel from experience having both of these boards, this one is sealed much better in terms of against the elements against water than this one. They're both weather sealed, but because of the way they're constructed, my opinion is this one is sealed better than this one. So if that's an issue for you, you're gonna be the type of rider that's gonna be riding around in wet, you need to go through puddles. I'm not saying I advise it, and of course that can void the warranty, but I would strongly suggest going for this one over this one, just because the bamboo board, for whatever reason, doesn't fend off the water and puddles and rain as well as this one can. Riding in the wet isn't recommended, but like I'm saying, we live in England, we get caught out on occasions. Maybe that's some food for thought. So a big thank you for watching the video all the way to the end. Riding both of these boards has been a fun experience. Both of them have their strong points. This has crazy stability. It's incredibly predictable. This is a little bit more Larry, a little bit more whippy and crazy, and you have to get used to that kind of flexing and unflexing and snapping back into position of the de deck of the board while it's twisting and contorting while you're riding around. But it's a much more uh, enjoyable ride if you're the type of rider that likes that traditional longboard or skateboard feel versus the carbon. But like I said, this is going to be the one I'm going to be biased towards because it's my preference. Riding around on this board has been absolutely nuts. It's so so stable, that's the wrong word. Riding around on this board has been absolutely nuts. It's so much fun ripping around on dirt, ripping around on trails, dropping down off of curbs, flooring it, carving real, real deep. You have such a great experience. Not that you don't in this one. This is also fun. It's incredibly predictable. I think that's the most important word. Maybe if you're a beginner and you're kind of like trying to figure out how to be really confident on a board, having a stiff deck might actually not be a bad thing to have. It's incredibly stable, incredibly predictable, and the ground clearance is something that this bamboo board simply doesn't have. But hopefully this video has helped clear up the differences between these two boards to make your decision of buying them a little bit easier. But as always guys, big thank you for watching all the way to the end. Any links that you need to be able to pick up any of these boards will be down below in the video description. Big thanks for watching. Make sure you thumbs up and subscribe so you can stay tuned for the next video and I'll catch you in the next one. And also before I go, make sure that you follow us on Instagram. All the links will be down below in the video description. Take care guys and peace.